ever get this weird feeling like the more you love something, the more it kind of stresses you out. Mm, yeah. We're diving deep into that today. Oh, cool. Taking a look at it through, get this, Buddhism. Okay. Yeah. We've got some excerpts from this text. Zen secret. Right. It's all about letting go even the things we love to find more happiness. Cool. Wild stuff. It's funny, you know, because this idea from Zen secret, this letting go thing, it really challenges how we usually think, right? Totally. <laughs> it, it feels backwards almost. Yeah. Like, if I'm really into something, shouldn't I hold on tight? Isn't that what makes us happy? It seems that way, for sure. But this is where it gets interesting. Zen secret, and actually Buddhist thought in general, they suggest it's not happiness itself that causes us to suffer. Okay. It's the clinging to it. That's where the suffering starts. Huh. So it's not the happiness, it's how we hold on that's the problem. Yeah, like we get this idea if we can just hold on to this good feeling, this person, this job, then we'll be safe. But that grip, that's where things get messy. Okay, so unpack that a bit for me. How does Buddhism see this whole attachment thing as a root cause of suffering? All right, so Buddhism has this core concept, impermanence. Basically, everything changes, right? It's yeah. just a fact of life. But our minds, we crave that stability. We latch on to things, people, ideas, as if they're never going to change. And they always do. Exactly. Yeah. So we set ourselves up for this disconnect, our expectations versus reality. And when change inevitably hits us, relationships end, jobs change, we lose people. Yeah. That clinging to how we thought things would be, that's the real pain. Makes sense. Yeah. So if clinging is the issue, letting go is the answer. But, and this is a big one, why is letting go as so hard? Well, think about it. Our brains are wired to seek pleasure and avoid pain. It's survival, right? This instinct makes us crave things that make us feel good and run from anything that might cause discomfort or loss. So naturally, we hold on tight, even when it's not good for us. So we're wired to cling, basically. No wonder letting go feels impossible, like fighting our own biology. Exactly, but here's the cool thing about Zen Secret. It teaches us to work with our biology, not against it. It suggests that accepting change, accepting impermanence, that's how we can actually reduce suffering. Hmm, okay. But how does letting go lead to happiness? That still feels a little backward. Think of it this way. When we release our grip on things needing to be a certain way, we open ourselves up. New possibilities come in, new experiences we might have missed otherwise. Letting go helps us be more present, appreciate what we have now, you know, yeah. less fear of losing it because we accept that things change. Okay, that's starting to click. Now, I want you to think about this, and I know this is something I've struggled with. What's one thing you're holding on to really tightly that might be causing you stress? It could be a relationship, a belief about yourself, even that picture you have of how your life should look. Mm. Take a second to really think about it. Yeah. I'll share an example. You know, I used to be so fixated on having the perfect career path hitting all the milestones, and it made me miserable. Mm -hmm. I was so stressed, always worried about the next step. I wasn't enjoying the journey at all. I've been there. Eventually, I had to just let go of that rigid plan. And honestly, amazing things happened. Unexpected, but amazing. It's like what Zen Secret points to, right? Letting go is a practice. It's not a one-time thing. Just recognizing what we're clinging to is a huge first step. For sure. And you know, there are tools to help us do this. Mindfulness meditation, for example. Even a few minutes a day focusing on your breath, it can really help you notice those clinging thoughts and let them go gently. It's about changing how we view change itself. Exactly. Which leads us to our final thought for you to ponder today. If change is truly inevitable, how can we approach it with curiosity instead of fear? That's a good one. Right. 